Are you the kind of person who likes to save money by getting the cheapest version of a template and then tracing that template right onto the wood before cutting it out? That does work and you can certainly do that, but I'm going to show you a better way to get more consistent and repeatable results by making your own rigid template. Welcome back to the wood shop. If you're new here, my name is Brett. Recently I got plans and templates for this cool nesting camp chair. This nesting chair design has been around quite a while. It's two assemblies, a seat assembly and a back assembly that slide into each other. The templates I got were the Jay Bates version. He made some tweaks to the design to make it more comfortable and easier to put together. It's got a slight curve in the seat and a slight curve in the back to make it more comfortable and it really is a comfortable chair to sit in. This is the child size version. There is an, an adult size version too. The child size templates look like this. They arrive in two pieces and they just click together and there's zero play once they're clicked together. They're laser cut out of quarter inch MDF. So they're perfectly precise. Jay has these plans and templates available on his website, Jay's Custom Creations. I've linked it in the description. I'm gonna show you how to make something similar to these but if you just want to skip that and get the templates for yourself, just click on the link below and it'll take you right there. But if you're new to template routing, stick with me and I'll show you how to make your own MDF templates. If you order the paper version, you'll get a download that you can print off at home. The plans are for both the adult version and the child size. There's a cut list for 1x10 boards and step-by-step -step instructions. This is what the paper templates look like. It's a full-scale template of the back and the seat frame that prints on six pages. The first thing you want to do is verify that your printer scaled it correctly by comparing to a ruler. The instructions say to trim off the border before lining them up and taping them together, but I'm going to skip that step. Then you need to line up these registration marks one on top of the other. I use a toothpick to make a small hole so I can see where the lines intersect. Line that up as best as you can and then tape the pages together so you can see all the lines. I tape the template as well as the white space on either side so they don't flop around. Make sure you tape it on the back side too. Then I just do a rough cut around the pieces to get some of the extra paper out of the way. I'm not cutting to the line at this stage. As you're cutting these out, make sure you don't cut off these target looking things. They're there to show you where to line up a half inch drill bit to make a quarter inch radius, so don't cut those off. Then I'm going to attach these to a sheet of quarter inch MDF with double sided tape. Here's a pro tip for you guys. Instead of cutting the tape and the backing together, leave yourself a little tag of the paper backing so you don't have to fiddle with picking at the backing with your fingernail every time. This is a big time saver and a frustration saver. This is great tape. It has all the properties you want with a quality double stick tape. I'll put a link in the description, of course. Be careful not to tear the paper like I just did. Dang it, I just did it again. This might seem like overkill to some of you, but I lined the entire perimeter of the template with double sided tape. Hopefully this will make sense to you as you keep watching. Not again. Ah, oh, jeez. Nice job, Brett. Now we want to press it down so it's nice and smooth with no wrinkles. Then I'm just going to trim off the excess on the table saw. Here I'm just making a divot in each of these targets with a center punch. That helps register the drill bit so it doesn't wander. Then I'm scoring the paper just outside the line all the way around. I'm taking my time with each step of the process to be as precise as I can be. I know I'll never be as accurate as a laser cutter, but I'm trying to be as accurate as I can. Taking your time here and doing the best job that you can will make each subsequent step more accurate and more efficient, and you'll end up with a better result. Now I'm going to use a half inch Forstner bit to form a quarter inch radius at each of the slat locations. Hey, 
Hey Brett, get your head out of the way so we can see what you're doing. This is the opening for the support slat. Then it's over to the bandsaw to finish cutting these parts out. If you don't have a bandsaw, that's fine, you can use a jigsaw for this. I want to get as close as I can to the line without cutting into it. Again, taking your time here will mean less time spent at the sander smoothing everything out. This took me about 15 minutes to cut out this one part. I filmed the whole thing, but I'm only showing you a little bit. You're welcome. I use the smallest spindle I have, I believe it's a half inch, which is just perfect for getting into these curves. Then I smoothed out the long curves with the belt sander using long smooth strokes. I made sure to get rid of all the little bumps and ridges left by the bandsaw because the template router bit will definitely transfer those ridges to the workpiece if you don't. Making these two templates took me about four and a half hours start to finish. Of course I was filming the whole process, so that always makes every project take about three times as long. So you can probably do it a lot quicker. That being said, these laser cut templates that Jay Bates makes are selling for $25 for the child size version, $30 for the adult version. And just so you can see, here's the difference between the back for the adult versus the child. So you're going to have to decide what your time is worth. Money-wise, it would have been a lot more economical for me to just buy the templates and start making chairs from those. But for me, this was time well spent so I could show you how to make your own MDF templates. And you don't have to make this chair. Now that you know the process, you can make templates for any design and then use those templates over and over and over again to make very consistent and repeatable results for your own projects. In my next video, I'm gonna be making the actual chairs out of these templates I just made. As you can see behind me, I've got a stack of lumber. Uh, I've got some purple heart, some ash, and mahogany to make chairs from. So I'll have a link right here to that video once it's made. Meanwhile, here's another video I think you might like to watch next. Until next time, my friend, be safe and love each other.